In the world of chess, every move counts. The opening sets the stage for the battle ahead, shaping the course of the game and determining the fate of kings and queens alike. So, grab your knights, fortify your pawns, and join us as we explore the thrilling landscape of the top 10 chess openings. This video is a comprehensive guide on chess openings, so you can save it for later also. We've included timestamps for each opening. That means you can dive straight into the ones you're eager to master or stick around for the whole journey of learning. Let's continue. Our first opening is Sicilian Defense. The Sicilian Defense is one of the most popular and combative responses to E4 by Black. It's known for its sharp and dynamic nature, leading to complex positions where both players have chances for attacking opportunities. The Sicilian Defense begins with Black immediately counterattacking in the center by playing C5. This move strikes at White's central pawn on e4 and aims to establish Black's presence in the center from the flanks. Here are different popular variations of Sicilian defense which we will cover one by one. Open Sicilian. The Sicilian defense immediately challenges White's central pawn on e4 by playing c5, aiming to control the d4 square and strike at White's central presence. The open Sicilian arises after knight to f3 followed by Black's d6 and White's d4, leading to an open and dynamic pawn structure where both sides often aim to create imbalances and exploit weaknesses in the opponent's camp. Closed Sicilian In the closed Sicilian, White avoids the open lines and sharp tactical battles of the open Sicilian by choosing a more restrained approach. White plays knight to c3 followed by g3 or d3, aiming for a more positional setup. This often leads to slower, more strategic games where both sides maneuver their pieces for control of key squares. Dragon Variation The Dragon Variation is one of the most aggressive and sharply tactical lines within the Sicilian defense. It occurs after e4 c5, knight to f3 d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, and g6. While black focuses on attacking on the king side, they must remain vigilant against white's counterplay on the queen side or in the center. Najorf Variation The Najorf Variation is one of the most popular and highly respected lines within the Sicilian defense named after the Argentine Grandmaster Miguel Najorf. It's characterized by the moves e4 c5, knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, a6. The Najorf variation prioritizes rapid piece development and active play with both sides aiming to seize control of key central squares and create attacking chances. Black often develops the bishop to e6 or g7, prepares to castle kingside, and seeks opportunities to launch pawn breaks or piece sacrifices to open lines and target white's king. Skeven Engine Variation the Skeven Engine variation is a popular and highly respected line within the Sicilian defense named after the Dutch fishing village where it was first played in a match between Max Uwe and Alexander Alekine. It's characterized by the moves e4, c5, knight to f3, d6, d4, pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, e6. In the Skeven Engine variation, Black opts for a flexible and solid setup, aiming to establish a strong pawn structure and prepare for harmonious piece development. Alapin Variation The Alapin Variation is a solid and popular choice for White in the Sicilian defense, named after the Russian master Semyon Alapin. It's characterized by the move e4, c5, c3. In the Alapin variation, White avoids the heavily analyzed main lines of the open Sicilian and instead opts for a more restrained and positional approach. French variation. The French variation within the Sicilian defense arises after the moves. e4, c5, knight to f3, e6. With e6, Black immediately prepares to establish a solid pawn structure with pawns on d5 and e6, resembling a setup commonly seen in the French defense. Now coming on to our next chess opening, which is Rui Lopez or Spanish opening. The Spanish opening, also known as the Rui Lopez, is one of the oldest and most respected openings in chess. It begins with the moves e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5. This opening move, bishop to b5, is the hallmark of the Rui Lopez. The Rui Lopez adheres to classical opening principles by developing pieces efficiently and controlling the center. Both players aim to complete their development, secure their king's safety. 
and maintain a strong pawn structure while preparing for active middle game play. Here are some of the variations of Rui Lopez. Open Rui Lopez. In the Open Rui Lopez variation, the game follows a different path after the initial moves. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, a6, bishop to a4, knight to f6, castling king's side, knight takes e4. Unlike the closed Rui Lopez, where white maintains the tension in the center. In the open Rui Lopez, black opts to immediately challenge white's central pawn by capturing it with the nig. Closed Rui Lopez. In the closed Rui Lopez variation, the game takes a different trajectory after the initial moves. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, a6, bishop to a4, knight to f6, castling king's side, bishop to e7. In contrast to the open Rui Lopez, where black captures white's e4 pawn early on, in the closed Rui Lopez, black opts for a solid and flexible setup with bishop to e7 preparing to complete development and fortify their position before committing to any pawn exchanges. Berlin Defense In the Berlin Defense, the game takes a different turn after the initial moves of the Rui Lopez. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, knight to f6. With knight to f6, black chooses the Berlin Defense, a solid and resilient system that has gained popularity at the highest levels of chess. Martial attack. The martial attack is a dynamic and aggressive response for black within the Rui Lopez. Named after the American chess master Frank Marshall. It begins with the moves. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, a6, bishop to a4, knight f6, castling king side, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop e3, castling king side, c3, d5. Schliemann Genish Gambit. The Schliemann defense, also known as the Genish Gambit, is an aggressive and dynamic response for black within the Rui Lopez opening. It arises after the moves. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, and f5. With f5, black immediately challenges white's central e4 pawn, sacrificing a pawn to open lines and create active piece play. Exchange variation. The exchange variation of the Rui Lopez occurs after the moves. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, a6, bishop takes c6. With the move bishop takes c6, white opts for the exchange variation where they choose to exchange their bishop for black's knight on c6. Italian game. The Italian game is a classic and popular opening that arises after the moves. e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4. With bishop to c4, white develops the bishop to c4 aiming to control the central squares and prepare for rapid kingside development. Let's discuss some popular variations of the Italian game. Gioco Piano. The Gioco Piano is a classic and strategic variation within the Italian game. Known for its solid and harmonious development, it begins with the moves. e4, e5, Knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. In the Juoco piano, both sides aim to complete their development, fortify their pawn structures, and prepare for active piece play. Juoco pianissimo. The Juoco pianissimo is a quiet and solid variation within the Italian game, focusing on slow and strategic maneuvering rather than immediate tactics. It arises after the moves. e4, e5, knight to f3. Knight to c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, d3, with d3. White chooses the Juoco pianissimo, aiming for slow and solid development without immediately committing to aggressive pawn breaks or peace sacrifices. Evans Gambit The Evans Gambit is a bold and aggressive opening within the Italian game, aimed at rapid development and attacking chances for white. It arises after the moves. e4, e5. Knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, b4. With the move b4, white offers a pawn sacrifice, initiating the Evans Gambit. Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit is one of the oldest and most respected openings in chess. 
characterized by White's pawn's sacrifice on move 2. It begins with the moves d4, d5, c4. With c4, White offers a pawn sacrifice, initiating the queen's gambit. Let's discuss some of the variations of queen's gambit. Slav defense. The Slav defense is a solid and resilient response to the queen's gambit. Favored by many top-level players for its solid pawn structure and flexible piece placement. It arises after the moves. d4, d5, c4, c6. With c6, black chooses the Slav defense, preparing to establish a strong pawn structure and develop their pieces harmoniously. The Slav defense often leads to slow and strategic middle game positions where both sides have opportunities for long-term planning and gradual improvement of their positions. Queen's Gambit Declined The Queen's Gambit Declined is a classical and solid defense for black against the Queen's Gambit. Characterized by black declining the gambit pawn and instead focusing on solid development and pawn structure, it typically arises after the moves. d4, d5, c4, e6. With e6, black chooses to decline the gambit pawn and instead opts for a more solid and restrained approach. Queen's gambit accepted. The queen's gambit accepted is a sharp and dynamic response for black against the queen's gambit. Characterized by black accepting the gambit pawn on c4, it typically arises after the moves. d4, d5, c4, d takes c4. With d takes c4, black accepts the gambit pawn aiming to gain material advantage and potentially exploit white's central weaknesses. The queen's gambit accepted often leads to highly tactical and aggressive middle game positions. King's Indian Defense Picture yourself as black facing the almighty d4, and you decide, you know what? I'm not going to just sit back and let white dictate the game. I'm going to shake things up and give them a run for their money. That's where the king's Indian defense struts onto the scene. The typical starting moves of the king's Indian defense are d4, knight to f6, c4, g6. With g6, black signals their intention to fianchetto the king's bishop and prepare for a solid pawn structure around the king's side. Now let's discuss some variations of King's Indian defense. Main line, d4, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, knight to f3, castling king's side. This is where the fun begins in the main line of the King's Indian defense. Both sides start their development preparing for a tactical and strategic battle that will unfold over the next moves. Samish variation, d4, Knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, f3. The Samish variation spices things up early with white pushing their f pawn to f3, aiming for a solid but aggressive setup. Averback variation, d4, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, bishop e2. Castling king side, bishop g5. The Averback variation takes a more patient approach, with white delaying the advance of the f pawn and focusing on solid development. Petrosian variation, d4, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, knight to f3, castling king side, bishop e2, e5, d5. The Petrosian variation introduces early central tension with black's e5 pawn break, aiming for dynamic and strategic play. For pawn's attack, d4, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, f4. The four pawns attack is all about white boldly pushing their pawns forward on the queen side, aiming for rapid expansion and aggressive play. Now let's discuss the French defense opening. The main moves are e4, e6. The French defense kicks off with black boldly responding to white's e4 pawn push with e6, immediately staking a claim in the center and preparing for a solid counterattacking game. Some of the variations are winnower variation, e4, e6, d4, d5, knight to c3, bishop b4. The winnower variation spices things up early with black pinning white's knight on c3, aiming to disrupt white's pawn structure and create imbalances in the position. Terish variation. e4, 
e6, d4, d5, knight to d2. The Teresh variation takes a more solid and restrained approach, with white opting to develop their knight to d2 instead of c3. Advanced variation, e4, e6, d4, d5, e5. The advanced variation sees white boldly pushing their e-pawn forward to e5, aiming for rapid central expansion and a space advantage. Exchange variation, e4, e6, d4, d5, pawn takes d5. The exchange variation sees white opting to exchange pawns on d5 early, aiming for simplified and symmetrical positions. Let's move to another popular opening Karokin defense. The Karokin defense arises after the moves. e4, c6. In the Karokan, black immediately stakes a claim in the center by advancing the c-pawn to c6. This move not only supports the d5 square but also prepares for the eventual advance of d5, challenging white's central control. The Karokan is known for its solid and resilient nature, as black aims to build a sturdy pawn structure and develop their pieces harmoniously. By adopting this setup, black seeks to control the center and prepare for a flexible game plan based on the specific variations that may arise. Some of the variations are Advanced Variation e4, c6, d4, d5, e5. In the Advanced Variation, white boldly pushes their e-pawn forward to e5 on the third move, aiming for rapid central expansion and a space advantage. This move signals white's aggressive intentions to control the center and restrict black's pawn breaks. For black, the response is typically bishop f5, exchange variation, e4, c6, d4, d5, e takes d5, c takes d5. In the exchange variation, white opts to exchange pawns on d5 early, aiming for simplified and symmetrical positions. By capturing on d5 with the pawn, white aims to open lines and create potential weaknesses in black's pawn structure. Pan of Bivinic attack. e4, c6, d4, d5, e takes d5, c takes d5, c4. In the Pan of Bivinic attack, white captures on d5 with the pawn, e takes d5, followed by an immediate c4 pawn push. This aggressive pawn break aims to seize control of the center and create dynamic play on the board. Black typically responds with knight to f6. Black develops the knight to f6, aiming to challenge white's central control and prepare for kingside development. This move also supports the pawn on d5 and prepares for potential piece maneuvers. Classical variation. e4, c6, d4, d5, knight c3, or knight f3. D takes e4, knight takes e4. In the classical variation, white develops their knight to c3 or sometimes to f3, preparing to establish a solid central presence. By capturing on e4 with the knight, white aims to maintain control over the central squares and maintain flexibility in their development. Black typically responds with bishop to f5. In the classical variation, both sides aim to complete their development and maneuver their pieces to optimal squares. White typically continues with moves like bishop e2, castling king's side, and d takes e5, aiming to solidify their central control and prepare for king's side expansion. Fantasy variation. e4, c6, d4, d5, f3. In the fantasy variation, white opts for an aggressive pawn move with f3 on the third move, aiming to immediately challenge black's central control and set the stage for aggressive king's side expansion. Black typically responds with D takes E4. Black captures on E4 with a pawn, aiming to establish a solid pawn structure and maintain control over the center. This move also opens lines for Black's pieces and prepares for rapid development. Let's discuss Nimzo Indian defense now. The Nimzo Indian defense arises after the moves D4, Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop B4. In the Nimzo Indian defense, Black immediately challenges white's central control by pinning the knight on c3 with the move bishop b4. This move creates immediate pressure on white's position and sets the stage for dynamic and strategic play. Here's some variations of Nimzo Indian defense. Rubinstein variation. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, e3. The Rubinstein variation sees white playing e3, 
preparing to fianchetto their kingside bishop. This move aims for solid development while maintaining flexibility in the pawn structure. It's a quieter approach aiming for a solid position without committing too early to aggressive plans. Classical variation. d4. Knight f6. c4. e6. Knight c3. Bishop b4. Queen c2. The classical variation features white playing queen c2. Preparing to castle king's side and maintain control over the central squares. This move allows white to avoid doubling their pawns after bishop takes c3, and it often leads to rich and complex middle game positions with battles on both flanks. Samish variation. d4. Knight f6. c4. e6. Knight c3. Bishop b4. f3. The Samish variation is a sharp and aggressive choice for white, aiming to clamp down on black's central control and disrupt their development. This move creates immediate tension in the center and can lead to complex and dynamic positions where both sides must tread carefully. Three knights variation. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, knight f3. In the three knights variation, white opts for knight f3 instead of playing e3 or queen c2. This move aims for solid and flexible development, preparing for kingside castling while maintaining control over the central squares. The next opening we will discuss is King's Indian attack. The King's Indian attack when initiated after the moves. Knight to f3, d5, g3. It offers white a flexible and solid setup to control the center and prepare for a harmonious development. Following g3, white typically proceeds with developing the kingside bishop to g2, often followed by kingside castling. Now let's look at some of the variations of king's Indian attack. Yugoslav variation. In the Yugoslav variation, white often aims for a sharp and aggressive setup. Similar to those seen in the Yugoslav attack of the dragon variation in the Sicilian defense, the key moves typically include knight f3, d5, g3, knight f6, White prepares for rapid central expansion and kingside aggression, often with moves like f4 followed by a pawn storm on the king's side. This variation can lead to complex and tactical positions where both sides vie for control and attacking chances. Caris Variation Named after the Estonian chess grandmaster Paul Caris, the Caris Variation is characterized by its flexible and solid setup. The key moves typically include knight f3, d5, g3, bishop g4. White focuses on solid development and aims to control key central squares while preparing for kingside castling. While black looks for c6 or knight d7. Sicilian variation. The Sicilian variation of the king's Indian attack is so named because it resembles pawn structures and setups often seen in the Sicilian defense. The key moves typically include knight f3, d5, g3, c5, bishop g2, Knight c6, kingside castle, e5. White aims for a solid pawn structure with central and kingside control, while black adopts a flexible setup with rapid pawn expansion on the queen side. This variation leads to dynamic and strategic middle game positions where both sides have chances to launch attacks and maneuver for control. Now let's discuss the ready opening. The ready opening is a flexible and strategic chess opening that begins with knight to f3. Named after the Czechoslovakian Grandmaster Richard Reddy, this opening seeks to control the center indirectly rather than occupying it immediately with pawns. Some of the variations are Reddy Gambit, Knight to f3, d5, c4. White offers the c4 pawn as a gambit in exchange for rapid development and pressure on the center. Black can accept the gambit with d takes c4 or decline with moves like e6 or Knight to f6. King's Indian Attack, Knight f3. Knight f6, g3, d5, bishop g2, e6, kingside castling, bishop e7, d3, kingside castling, knight on b1 moves to d2, c5 or other black responses. This setup often transposes into a king's Indian attack structure, where white aims for a solid pawn structure with kingside castling and potential pawn advances on the kingside or central breaks. Thank you all for tuning in to today's video. We hope you found it insightful and enjoyable. Which opening do you play the most? Tell us in comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe Q Chess Clips for more chess content. Keep practicing, keep playing, and until next time, may your moves be strategic and your victories sweet. See you on the board.